What's up, y'all? Red Pill Vegan. Today, we've got Dr. Gundry versus Dr. Greger on intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. So hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. And believe it or not, we run the same metabolism as bears. We're an omnivore just like a bear. Uh, bears become insul insulin resistant every fall to store fat. And they, we act just like bears. So we have a perfect model to study what happens to humans. Fasting for a week or two can cause more weight loss than calorie restriction, but paradoxically it may actually lead to less loss of body fat. Wait, how can eating fewer calories lead to less fat loss? Because during fasting your body starts cannibalizing itself and burning more of your own protein for fuel. Emperor penguins, elephant seals, and hibernating bears can survive just burning fat without dipping into their muscles. Now, a lot of us studied hibernating bears um, in uh, learning how to preserve hearts during uh, heart surgery and for heart transplantation. In the process of, of studying hibernating bears, um, I became incredibly impressed that you know a mother bear goes into the den uh, pregnant. She, she doesn't eat for five months. And she leaves the den with all of her muscle mass intact. Uh, why? Because if her muscle mass wasn't, wasn't intact, she couldn't hunt, and they'd starve. Hibernating bears can survive just burning fat without dipping into their muscles, but our voracious big brains appear to need at least a trickle of blood sugar, and if we're not eating any carbohydrates, our body is forced to start turning our protein into sugar to burn. But the most fascinating thing about it, and I talk about it in the book, is the, the mother bear doesn't urinate for five months. And uh, she doesn't urinate because kidneys have basically two purposes. One, to get rid of the water we either drink or are, is in our food. And number two, to get rid of protein waste byproducts. And she's not burning her muscle, so she's not burning protein. Even just a few grams of carbs, like people who add honey to their water when they fast, can cut protein loss up to 50%. What about adding exercise to prevent loss of lean tissues during a fast? It may make it worse. At rest, most of your heart and muscle energy needs can be met with fat. But if you start exercising, they start grabbing some of the blood sugar meant for your brain, and your body may have to break down even more protein. And She's not burning her muscle, so she's not burning protein, but she's burning fat. She's eating her fat as ketones. Less than half of the weight loss during the first few weeks of fasting ends up coming from your fat stores. So even if you doubled your daily weight loss on a fast, you may actually be losing less body fat. So she's in ketosis for five straight months, and she doesn't urinate. Did he just say not urinating for five months? And that's your model for human metabolism? So she's in ketosis for five straight months, and she doesn't urinate. So, I mean, there's a, and believe it or not, we run the same metabolism as bears. We're an omnivore just like a bear. Uh, bears become insul insulin resistant every fall to store fat, and they, we act just like bears. So we have a perfect model to study what happens to humans. Okay. The scale made it look as though they were doing better when they were completely fasting, but the reality is that they were doing worse. So during the five-week experiment, they would have lost even more body fat sticking to their calorie-restricted diet than completely stopping eating in the middle. They would have lost more body fat eating more calories. We act just like bears, so we have a perfect model to study what happens to humans. And so prolonged fasting in humans has been studied extensively. Fasting for a week or two can interfere with the loss of body fat rather than accelerate it. Clearly, these two have a difference of opinion when it comes to their interpretation of the research. That being said, guys, I think it's fascinating that Dr. Gundry claims he fasts for 22 hours a day, six months a year.
you know, for the last 10 years, uh, starting starting January 1st, just because that's when I start, you know, I go uh, 22 hours a day without eating, mm -hmm. and I, I do that until June, and I've done that for 10 years now. So it makes sense to question whether or not he's even following his own advice to eat 12 tablespoons of olive oil per day. Because how would you eat 12 tablespoons of olive oil in a single meal, right? Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Gundry. If you're like almost anybody outside of Italy or Greece, you need more olive oil in your diet immediately. Okay, you've heard me say it before. The purpose of food is to get more olive oil in your mouth. In fact, I suggest about 12 tablespoons per day. But Dr. Gundry, it's impossible to eat that much olive oil. If you're new here, the plant paradox is fascinating. There are a lot of exuberant claims being made, more than what I can just cover in a single video. But there's also some valid criticisms by not just me, but other leading experts in the field. So what I've done is created a playlist of some of my more in-depth Dr. Gundry and Plant Paradox videos. What I want you to do is check out the olive oil video specifically and the Dr. Gundry playlist. So I'm going to go ahead and put links to those at the end of this video, which should pop up right here. Go ahead and click on those links right now. So check these videos out if you haven't already seen them. Hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss a video. All right, y'all know what time it is. Red Pill Vegan, next.